Hello, welcome back to CG Blend. In the previous tutorial, we've talked about how to create a very simple user interface where everything is visible on the timeline. This is for designers that don't really like code too much. We're creating everything in one FLA file. We're not using external action script. Please watch the movie to see how we've built this entire thing. Here's how it worked. We have different screens. You can access any screen you want at any time by pressing a particular button. All right, so we've built that via timeline animation and the code was right here. It looked like um, the code was just a go to and stop at different times. Okay, so that's, that was part one. Now part two is something we're gonna change. It's different that we're gonna approach it only with one frame this time so we're gonna get the same thing done in a different way and uh, we're gonna actually reuse the same file so if you've saved your file you can open that and uh, we can actually start by deleting this stuff here so I'm gonna select all of these frames right click and say remove frames so I just got rid of a whole bunch of frames okay and um, we're also not going to use labels because there is not going to be any go to and stop code anywhere so we're going to delete that layer as well so I can save that now actually we'll go ahead and save that as UI one frame and uh, now we have just one screen so far okay it's not going to go anywhere in fact it's going to tell me that the functions are not available if I press on anything okay that's just telling me that whatever I'm referring to is not there anymore because the labels are gone so let's see how we can fix that one first off we're gonna create a movie clip out of this we're gonna layer movie clip on top of another movie clip so that we can tell which things we're gonna hide and which things we're gonna show and that's how the user is gonna believe that they're on different pages so let's go ahead and select whatever we have on the contents page. We're going to uh, hit F8 to convert that to a movie clip. Okay, we're going to name it Start Screen Movie Clip Type and hit OK. Now, I would like to see that it's in the library and I would like to have three more, one for each of the four screens, okay? So right click and scroll down t until you see duplicate symbol. I know you can't see it on here, but if you scroll down, you will see duplicate symbol. And uh, click on that, and we're going to create an options screen. And what we need to do, this is a duplicate symbol. If you can see, there's two of them. We double click on the symbol, and we just change whatever we need to change on the content. And I'll also change the colors of everything. So that's our options screen. Double click on the empty space to get back out on main timeline. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing once again and I'll try to make sure you guys can see that. Right click, duplicate symbol right there. And the next one we're creating is a game screen. Okay, so here it is in the library and you can actually click on them and see them in the library and uh, this is the third symbol so one more time right click duplicate symbol and this is going to be the credits screen let's double click on that change it to credits okay. So that's the credit screen. Let's get back out on the timeline. Credit screen. Let's give it an instance name. Properties. We're going to go uh, type in in the instance name portion, and this is going to be a credits. And we call it, can call it MC or screen, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to call it credits MC. The next one, I'm going to have to take them out of the library on the stage. So the next one was game and we never changed the word game there so we're gonna have to do that right now so we're here in a game screen game screen let's go ahead and change the color as well so we can tell them apart easily 
So that's my game screen. I'm going to select that, go to properties, and say this is game MC. And the reason I'm giving them instance names because that's what I'm going to use to call on these movies through action scripts. So it's important that they have instance names and that you know what you spell them, how you spell them. And um, here's how I spelled mine game MC, and the rest of them are going to go with the same format. Next one is going to be uh, options. So go to the library, bring out options. Put it where you need it on the stage. Go to properties, type in options, MC. And the last one is the start screen. Put that wherever you need it. Go to properties and type in start MC. So this is a little bit less visual this is going to look a little messy when you open the file and obviously right now if I hit play uh, control enter we're going to see a mess there as well but there's, there's just going to be a little bit more abstract with code you will see how we manipulate this so we gave each one of them a instance name so let's go to code now F9 on the first frame of the action script 3 layer and uh, what I'm gonna do, first of all, I'm gonna pin this so I don't lose it. And I'm gonna delete, go to and stop because those are no longer gonna be valid. And I'm gonna add something. I'm gonna add things that are gonna hide the movie clips. It's a uh, code that's going to look like the movie clip name dot visible equals true or false and that is a boolean whether it's true um, when you showing something's true or false so let's say the first one was start mc dot visible when I start my movie do I want that to be visible yes so I'm going to try uh, type in true uh, the next one was options mc and same format, but this time it's false because I don't want to see that. Make sure you spell it right. I don't want to see that right away. Credits and game are going to have the same thing as the options, so I'm just going to copy that, paste, and credits. Alrighty. So this is going to take care of the problem where we saw everything at once. So I control enter, I hit control enter and now we don't see those three other ones because they're actually hidden. This one is seen but no buttons are working. So we're gonna make the buttons go and do what they need to do. Uh, we're actually gonna reuse this quite a lot of times. Now again this is simplified code without any if and else statements and uh, switch cases and all of that. This is just going to be straightforward, so it's going to be a lot of repetition. And uh, that's all right because we're going to build on this and going to get through um, more and more interesting code. So start MC visible true, that was at the start. When I press the start button, I wanted to go to... Uh, this is a for the, um, code for the game screen via start button. So we click start button and we want to go to the game screen. So I'm going to paste that code in here and start button. I don't want to see the start MC anymore, so that's going to be false. Which screen do I want to see? Well, I'm going to see game. So game should say true. Not true. True. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and check it. Control enter. Click on start. We see game but we can't go back. So let's just set the rest of them here with code. Uh, next one is options. I'm gonna make start invisible and options visible. So it's pretty easy from now on. Next one is credits. I'm gonna make again when we paste it start invisible and credits visible. And then we have the back button, and the back button takes us to the start screen. So that one is actually going to go and be just like the first, very first 
um, statement here. Now let's check the code and everything should work. So that was pretty easy. Please let me know if you need any more explanation on this one. And here's the code again. Okay. So you can pause. I'm going to scroll down so that you can pause. So this is lines 1 through 21 with comments. Now I'm scrolling down to lines 22 through 42. And now the rest of the movie. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Let me know what you think.